Welcome to the Thriving Tides Podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur or busy individual looking for self-care ideas, you're in the right place. And we can't wait to share our experiences with you. So welcome back to Thriving Tides. This is uh, feels really weird because this is the last guest episode of season two. I'm shocked. Um, but we've got the sparkly Sharon Keller here with us today. Whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> if you follow my Instagram, you know who she is, but I will tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon is the owner of Bounce Hair Studio. She's been in this industry for over half her life, which is not that long. Um, she's passionate about helping people look and feel their absolute best. She also loves to support other stylists, and she's an educator with the Milkshake brand. Um, and if you haven't used any of their products yet, they all smell like something you want to eat. So mm-hmm. get in on it. <laughs> um, and it really allows her to share her knowledge and experience in a much broader way by working with stylists all across North America, which is really cool. Um, also, really cool fact is she has intensive training in wig making and maintenance, like come on. Um, she's done wigs for like the confet center and lots of photo shoots, things like that. She's also done event and stage production. So she's done, you know, events at the Confederation center and events such as shellfish festival. I thought I was going to mess that one up. Um, and she's got two great girls that she's raising too with her husband, Kieran. So Ruby and Clara are uh, always keeping her on her toes when she's not, you know, working in hair and events. So thank you so much, Sharon, for being with us. i um, really excited to dive in with you tonight. Thanks for having me. It's uh, now I'm exhausted from your talking. I like, <laughs> oh my God, it's a lot to absorb. <laughs> and it's all you, girl. It's all you. <laughs> Um, I feel like I personally like this am a lot to absorb for humans anyway. <laughs> Self-awareness at its finest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. I like you. If that matters. It does. Good. <laughs> so let's start. So yeah, you say that you've been doing hair for over half your life. So let's go back and tell us, um, how did you get into this industry? Oh, well, I think like I knew from probably a very, very young age that I wanted to be a hairdresser. Like Mm -hmm. I would have birthday parties when I was little where it would be like hair parties. When I was nine, I asked for that like classic, you know, the pink crimper and you could like change the place. Amazing. Um, So I think I knew kind of like all along that I wanted to be a hairdresser, but I, uh, Back in those days, which would have been like, you know, in the 80s <laughs> or whatever, like <laughs> hairdressing was just a career that you did if you couldn't do anything else type of thing. Mm, like a fallback. So, mm. yeah. And uh, I don't know. I guess there was like a really weird stigma about that. And so I always played with hair and I was always super interested in it, but when I graduated high school, I took like a year off and then I went to university and, um, I was in my second year of university and I was just sitting there and I was like, why the heck am I doing all of the football players hair? Like, why am I pulling people's hair through caps, like Mm. in university? And I was like, it was kind of like an aha moment. I'm like, okay, so after my second year of university, I left. I came back to PEI actually to stage manage a high school musical. Mm, that was why cool. I left university in the middle of my second year um, <laughs> to stage manage up, like my old high school's musical. And um, I was just like, I'm not going to go back. Mm, it makes no yeah. sense. And then I enrolled in the September session of uh, the hairdressing school here. And it was kind of like somewhere in the middle there, probably around my grade 11, 12 year, I started getting my hair done at Picasso's way back when Picasso's was like up above John Brown, like a long time ago. (laughs) And um, I met Paula 
town Bernard. And it was like this aha moment of, oh my gosh, hairdressing can be really cool. And you can actually mm-hmm. like make a cool career out of it. And yeah. all of a sudden in my brain, it wasn't like a, you know, that's what you do if you can't do anything else type of thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a reframe, right? And it's, even though you knew you wanted to do it, it's almost like there was some weird like stigma carry, you were carrying around on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. But then somewhere along the line, hair salons started getting very trendy and very like high, highly decorated. And mm. it wasn't like eight hairdressers in a row with the same station in front of them. And Right. You know, and you just go in for this like standard cut that everybody does the same thing, whatever. Exactly. There's somewhere along that line, it became more artful mm. in my mind. So, yeah. 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 And I'm sure there are still salons that are like that. Um, but now you can take it to whatever you want, right? Exactly. You can mm. be whatever you want and as a hairdresser now. It's wild. Yeah. It's really fun. Um, you're, you do lots of cool things, <laughs> which we're going to talk about. <laughs> um, do you think you always knew, so if you knew from a young age, you wanted to be a hairdresser, did you always envision that you would have your own salon too? No, I don't think so. That my owning my own salon came out of like a series of life events. Hmm. Um, I used to manage like a fairly large salon in Charlottetown. And then I uh, got pregnant with my first child. And at the same time, my husband got a job on the other side of the island. We lived out near Montague at the time. And at the same, like at that exact same time here and got a job in Summerside. Mm. So we had to pick up and move. Um, and we moved to Cornwall. And I just started while I was on maternity leave doing my clients care, some of them in their house. Mm. And it really fit. And then when we bought our house in Cornwall, there just was a space within that house that was like, Oh Lord, it has its own entrance. It has its own bathroom and it has its own storage closet. That what? It just <laughs> made sense. Yeah. So meant to be. Yeah. And it's been mm. perfect ever since. Um, I was at the point then where I was educating for another company and they would want me to travel and working for somebody else. It's just kind of like, it doesn't really always jive mm. when you're being taken away from somebody else's business to work on a right. passion project of your own. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's really cool. So it just like was the perfect storm really. Yeah. Um, it all just kind of slid into place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like lots of, you never would have imagined it. Um, so you just never went back to the salon after Matt leave your first. Never. Crazy. Nope. And look at what you've built from there. I know. I'm like still in my little tiny hair salon, but That's perfect. the world around it is huge and gigantic. And I get to dabble in all sorts of different aspects because I only have myself to report to. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to take on a passion project, you just block those days off in your calendar, move things around with your clients. Uh (laughs) I do it a lot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) As you should, right? Um, Yeah. You still take care of everybody. So that's a good thing. Um, But you got to take care of yourself by filling your cup with these other things that you like to do as well, right? Because you are a dynamic person. You've got many talents. So you don't want to let any of them go to waste. Well, yeah, filling your, like it's that filling your cup is huge, right? Like I can be behind my chair and my clients give me so much joy. And most of my clients have been with me for 15 plus years and they Mm. do fill my cup. But I also have this other side of me that is a creative, like the trains never stop going (laughs) in my brain. How many trains are in there? (laughs) I was with Julian yesterday and I told her I couldn't focus because there was like five trains going like different directions in my (laughs) my brain. It happens all of the time. Yeah. And sometimes you want to jump on one train and you want to jump on another and and you can because you're you're the boss. Yeah. It's amazing. Very liberating. 
Yeah. I love that. Yeah. What, um, what inspired the name of your company bounce? Um, a Facebook contest. No way. <laughs> I don't even lie. So when I was, uh, moving here again, I had like a baby and mm-hmm. I knew that I was going to come here and open quickly and all of that. And I just, I'm very bad at decision-making for things like that for like permanence. Mm-hmm. So I ran a Facebook contest and it was like, give me your name. Mm-hmm. And I, like I vetted them for sure. I wasn't like doing this cut and die. Right. Nothing like cheesy. Like that. So I just, <laughs> I took all the names that I liked the best. Mm -hmm. and I literally drew one out of a hat cool that's putting a lot of trust in the world (laughs) right (laughs) I I do that a lot like I when I redecorated my camper I would like throw four pictures of wallpaper up on Facebook and I'd be like pick one (laughs) tell me what to do yeah Yeah. exactly I have faith in you guys (laughs) that's amazing interactive Well, yeah. And that's like, you're, you are like very dynamic and bring people in and, you know, like all this different stuff going on. So I'm, I'm really not actually that surprised to hear that that's the route that you take with this kind of stuff. (laughs) I like it. Oh man. Good for you. Um, what would you say is the best part of this life that you've built with like running your hair salon, doing all the other stuff? What do you like most about it? Oh, like the ability to be diverse, I think, Mm -hmm. and show my kids that you can do whatever and be whatever and accomplish big things, but also find a balance. Like my kids understand that if I go to do a photo shoot or I go to do a theater project or something like that, they understand that that brings me an epic amount of joy so that when I come back, I'm better for them Mm. and all of that. So it's kind of like, I love the diversity of being my own boss, how much it gives me the ability to do multiple things. Mm-hmm. And I love that my kids can see that because it brings the ideas to them that they can accomplish anything. They can be anything they want to be. And I just love the, the fact that me being here and being able to do other things has brought me a really wide array of clients from all different walks of life that mm. just bring so much joy all the time. Like the best stories happen in here and, yeah, you know, life events. Cool. Did I yeah. answer that question properly? Yeah. And I have like a million different questions to follow up now. Do <laughs> so it. I'll start with one and then hopefully I'll remember the others. Um, <laughs> so first, um, yeah, like you are working in your home. So you're very available to the girls as needed. Um, and then sometimes not too, right? Because you're going off and doing other projects and whatnot. But what are the pros and cons then of being at home and just having to go downstairs and being at work? Ah, on oh, your dogs. <laughs> can you hear them? Oh, I'm so That's sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's life. That's all good. We can have a con. That's a whole conversation on its all own. Those dogs, right? right. Um. <laughs> well. The pros are that I have more time and patience in the morning with my kids to get them to school Mm. because I'm not getting myself ready at the same time. So I like can focus on them. Uh, I guess the pros are, it's a con, but a pro, but you know, if I have somebody that doesn't show up, there's always another whole bunch of things that I can accomplish during that time. I'm not stuck in a salon somewhere. Mm. I can work on another project that I have going on at home or something like that. Um, the cons are my salon is right under my nine-year-old's bedroom. And today while I was doing my client, it legitimately sounded like there was a Tyrannosaurus Tyrannosaurus Rex like tap dancing above us. It was wild. <laughs> like what is happening? 
Yeah. And then, like, I don't know if you're a client of mine, you know about the dogs. Yeah. There's three of them. They bark a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They're fine. Yeah. But the pros oh, definitely cool. outweigh the cons, right? Like, yeah. my kids can come off home off the bus. I don't play for child care anymore. It's, mm -hmm. there well, are and, so many pros. Yeah. And as much as you get to make your own hours, I'm guessing there are times that you work in the evenings or, you know, a little bit later than a traditional like nine to five. And then you're yeah. also just, you're already home. Exactly. So, so that's nice too. On those days that I work the nine to nine, I just shut her all off, open the door and mm. can just walk upstairs and be prepared. Yeah. Although, the, you know, there is also the con of the fact that some people that know that I'm in my house think that I work 24 seven mm. and they're like, you know, oh, well, can't you do my hair on a Sunday? You're there already. Mm. <laughs> so like mm. boundaries. Yes, all the boundaries. We <laughs> talked a lot about those. <laughs> you had to, yeah, I had to learn the yeah. boundaries. I yeah. Well, yeah, so have you always been able to maintain those like rigid boundaries in terms of your time? Or like, what was it like when you first got started? No, no, it was hard. Um, when I first got started, I, you know, worked whenever a client would want to be here mm. because it was easy to yeah I, I air quoted that for those of you who aren't looking at right. the screen thank you <laughs> um so that was hard and then as my kids got older I really had to put up those boundaries but they're hard they're so mm. hard to do especially now with the fact that like I have five different avenues that clients can contact me in and mm. it's hard to ignore the messages because like in a world of instant gratification when they ask when you ask for something and I'm mm. totally guilty of it too like when I send an email I'm like why why hasn't he gone five, five minutes last five minutes <laughs> like so it's yeah. hard to just let those little dots those little blue dots stay blue and mm. not open them right yeah but get better at it good my yeah. weekends are my weekends <laughs> and they need to be right um kids are not like no matter what your life is we all need a break as entrepreneurs we can't go 24 7 um as much as we like to convince ourselves oh I got this it's no problem um yeah Good for you. It's, and it's that challenge. I, um, I was deal. I had a session with a client today too, who was saying a similar thing. He's like, I get really nervous if I haven't, like, I start getting anxiety if I haven't replied to a client in like a certain amount of time, because I think that they're just going to go elsewhere or, you know, go hire someone else instead. Cause I'm not fast enough. And I'm like, yeah, but you still, you have a life. <laughs> You're, you are worthy of that life. So, um, yeah. good on you for starting to put those practices in place. Yeah. Well, it's funny too, though. Like I find too, if I don't answer them right away, if I don't answer them soon enough, then I start to like awfulize them. They mm. sit in my inbox and I'm just like, oh my gosh, now I have to write back and say, I'm sorry. And I do you I'm have like, to apologize. Oh. Sorry, not but sorry. You don't. No, I know I don't, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and so like I awfulize my inbox and I'm like, mm. oh, that's a daunting task now because I let them sit in my head a weekend. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, terrible now? me. Terrible me for spending time with friends and family. <laughs> right. How, How dare, dare you? <laughs> um, and sidebar, I love, I love that you've introduced me to the word awful eyes. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious. And so, yeah, for anyone else who maybe is new to that term is just, you know, thinking the worst, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but it's in like a cute word there. You sit and you stare at that 11 on your inbox and you're like, oh, it's the worst. But they're really easy. Yeah. You're just awfulizing them. <laughs> yeah. Just awfulizing. I love it. Trademark. Um, another, so I'm going back to your like talking about kind of your pros and cons a little bit too. Um I love coming into your salon and being the only person there. And I can really openly talk about whatever and not worry about who else is sitting in there. Do you think that that's like a big perk that a lot of your clients love too? I really do. And I, 
two things. I, I've tried to do that for a long time. Like ever since I moved into this space, it was just like, I want it to be a safe space. I want it to be a one-on-one space. And yeah, there are times that, you know, I'll have a client call and be like, oh my gosh, I felt such and such happened. I really need it as soon as possible. If that's the case, um, I will always message the person who's already booked in and say, hey, do you mind if I double book mm. you? Like, it's, mm. you're always going to know if you're going to be in here with somebody else. But right. I just, there's something really special about taking that time with that client. And when they're sitting in the chair, um, still maintaining your focus with them and carrying the conversation on with them. And they don't mm. think that they're set off to the side while you're focused on somebody else going, been 45 minutes she forgot about me um, right she's like what color is my hair gonna be when oh these spoils God. come out <laughs> I know and I heard that yeah. story I go I go into yeah. so many salons all the time and I just hear that story all the time but mm. the other one thing that made it super super lucky for me that I started booking that way was when we got to come back after lockdown mm. it affected me a little bit with the amount of time I had to clean in the middle, but it didn't affect me in the amount of clientele I could take in because mm. I always booked one-on-one. Right. Yeah. So That's it helpful. was a super, super fortunate thing, but I know I do. I think everybody loves the fact that they're here, you know, moms can bring their babies mm. and they're not worried about nursing or their baby yeah. being too loud or anything. It's, yeah. it's just special. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it is. It really is. And it's out like it's a beautiful drive to get to your place too. So I can't, can't complain about that. Heading out to the country. (laughs) Um, No, I love that. What do you think? So we talked a little bit about boundaries already too, but do you, are you tempted at times to either like be, you know, if you're supposed to be working, like running upstairs and changing the laundry or like doing things like that. And then vice versa, if you do find that you have a little downtime when you're not supposed to be working, that you're finding things that you're picking away at, like, how do you keep them separate when it is just so easily accessible? Uh, unless I have like an external project that involves the salon, I'm pretty good to walk out at the end of the day and close the door and Mm. it's gone. I'm pretty good in that direction. In the other direction, it's um, a little tiny bit harder. Like Mm. I will, you know, put a client's color on and be like, oh, I should put a little laundry in while they process. Mm. or my kids will come home from school and I'll be like, Hey, you know, you're all set for a couple minutes. I'm just going to go check on the kids, make sure they're not you know, killing each other or, you know, <laughs> eating the whole tub of ice cream, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that will take me away sometimes. But then again, like I said, my clients have been my clients for the entire lifespan of my children. So most of them ask them to come in and say, hi, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, like, that's nice. Yeah. So I find the balance the other way harder. But when I walk out of the salon at the end of the day and close the door, I close the door. It's just closed. Done. Okay. Can't open until the next day. Right. Good. Yeah. It's good. Not yeah. everyone can do that. So thank you. <laughs> that's, that's 20 years of hairdressing. I only started right? being able to do that recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just leaving it behind the door. Do you think, um, okay, this is going to take us in another, you, you mentioned COVID a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. obviously we know that that's impacted every industry in some way, but I mean, you were fully (laughs) shut down for a good chunk of time. And then it's always been that like, Oh, you know, are we actually safe to open? What does this look like? Um, tell us about how all of that was for you, um, you know, personally and for your business, whatever you're willing to share. The lockdown was hard for me Mm. because I lost, I mean, I know everybody lost it. Like everybody was locked down and shut down, but I'm, I'm very much a person who takes the things I do are very much who I am. Mm. So 
the salon was closed and then theater stopped and then there was no hair shows and there was it so it was hard on me that way but again Julianne you and I have talked before that when I have an unscheduled day Mm. I falter big time Mm. I I I don't do well with unscheduled time Mm. um I can in the evenings, like at the end of the day, when my kids go to bed, I can chill out very, very easily. But if it happens in a day, I get very, very anxious. So lockdown was weeks of major anxiety for me. And it had nothing to do with the kids. And it had nothing to do with the fact that the salon was closed. It had to do with there was nothing for me to focus on Mm. other than reading. I renovated the whole salon during COVID. Like I got to week two and I literally said, Kieran, I'm going to go insane. I think it's an essential service for me to go to Home Depot and buy paint and wallpaper. (laughs) And it was great. It took, you know, it took up two weeks of my time and filled a gap and Mm -hmm. settled my brain, but it was hard. It's hard for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. And then like even getting to open again, then, you know, you, as you said, like it didn't really impact how many clients you would have, but the cleaning and sanitizing in between the asking the COVID questions, you know, like we get this crazy COVID fatigue doing all these additional things on top of what we're already, you know, so busy doing. Yeah. It's crazy. It's wild. And we're all still doing it. Like, Mm. I, hair salons are probably one of the safest places to walk into honestly like, yeah so every, clean. everything is wiped down everything is put in barbicide and yeah you know I follow my client out and wash the banister you know wow yeah but you got to do what you got to do right like you that's a responsible business do. owner yeah absolutely yeah. and like you could sit there and throw a tantrum and be pissed off about it but like what's that really going to get you nothing Nothing. Same, same life, just more miserable. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's no fun. Right. At least we're open. Right. There Absolutely. Are so that aren't so. Oh. Yeah. We've been very, very fortunate. Yeah. So. Deep breaths. <laughs> right. Uh, and you just bring sparkle all the time. So it's great. I like it. I like it. Um, My jam. It's my jam. I want to talk about some of the other things that you do. Um, but I also, um, Stephanie had a question (laughs) that she wanted me to ask you, um, tips for taking care of your hair, especially if you've maybe been neglecting it. Ooh. Okay. Like hair care is actually super, super simple. A lot of us do way more than we actually need to, to our hair. Mm. Um, a lot of us shampoo our hair way more than it needs to be shampooed and washing your hair is like too often is one really amazing way to damage your hair. Mm. You know, we have natural oils that come out of our scalp and they are what nourish the hair shaft of our hair and things like that. But what happens is we wind up getting in a cycle of we wash our hair every day and then those oils or the glands in your scalp over process. And then you're oily all the time type of thing. Mm. So like a couple of my favorite key tips for taking care of your hair is try to find a regimen that you can make it to shampooing every second or third day. Um, And for those of us who are used to doing it every day, it's going to take a while. I'm not going to lie. I work out all of the time. I don't wash my hair after workout. Same. I don't. (laughs) feel gross sometimes I, but <laughs> it feels gross sometimes but do you yeah. want to know what some dry shampoo will get you through it dry shampoo yeah. is amazing yeah um but if I want healthy hair and I want hair that's going to grow long I'm not going to wash it every time I work out it's mm. just not those na- <laughs> massage those natural oils <laughs> back get in them there. in there get them in there yeah um like minimizing hot tools but if you want to use hot tools always use protecting sprays because hot tools are a the first thing that is going to strip the color out of your hair if you color it 
Mm. And B is just going to fry it over time. And like just deep conditioning treatments using quality products. I can't, I'm not going to fault anybody that purchases products like off the shelf of a drugstore or wherever, Mm. but you have to know the ingredients that are in those. Right. Most of the shampoos on a drugstore shelf, the second ingredient in them is table salt. Weird. I never knew that. And the only reason the table salt is in there is to make it bubble. Oh. It's crazy, right? But yeah. salt is gonna I mean, what is salt gonna do? It's gonna dry out mm-hmm. your hair, make it yeah. crispy. Yeah. Interesting. Shampoo less, protect it from yeah. the heat, deep condition every now and then. Hmm. That's fair. Take your collagen. I yeah. Go to Simply for Life and get your collagen. <laughs> Go to Simply for Life, get your collagen. My hair, it has never been better since I started taking collagen. Grows like awesome. a weed, is thicker, yeah. healthier, shinier. Yeah, it's crazy. Amazing. Yeah. I've been taking it too. And I um, I don't think I told you, but I, for a million years, well, most of my life, um, washed my hair every single day. And it's only like three or four years ago that I stopped doing that. And even now, like I can stretch like six or seven days sometimes. <laughs> oh, so can I. And I have People the are like, what? Hair. Yeah, me too. Right? Yeah. So it's like it is possible. day one. Yeah, it is. Day one, blow dry it straight. Day two, yeah. throw a curl in it. Day three, pop a headband on. Day four, yeah. pop her in a ponytail. Yeah. Mine progressively gets Beautiful. like, I can get one or two days of it down. And then it's usually like half up for a day or two and then a full pony and then a bun. Yeah, <laughs> so like, exactly. You can tell what day I'm on based on my hair style. Dry shampoo, dry shampoo. All the dry shampoo. Yes. All yeah. the dry shampoo. Um, but like, I'm surprised, like you did my hair on Tuesday and it's Thursday and it's down today. So like, it's getting better. Like it's progressively getting easier. Um, yeah. So. And the more you take you're, care of it, you're right. Like the products, all that kind of stuff. I've noticed a huge difference. Yeah. And your body balances itself out, right? It knows mm. what it needs. Yeah. It's going to tell you point. when it needs to shampoo, be shampooed. Right. Yeah. Fair. Hmm. There you go, Steph. There are your tips. There you go, Steph. <laughs> oh, Steph has the prettiest um, hair. She has beautiful hair. I know. Love it. Do you just want to play with it sometimes when you see it? Maybe. <laughs> be a great braiding person Ooh, okay we'll set that up okay we will um and I'm thinking like even as I was hearing you talk about your tips um because a lot like it's mostly entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast right so time is always the thing that people say they don't have enough of so if you can cut out needing to shampoo and dry your hair every single day like what a big time savings back in your life just from that right absolutely Go to the dollar store, buy a shower cap. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Doesn't even yes. need to get wet. Mm-mm. No, that's so great. Yeah, it makes it easy. I like it. So tell us, Sharon, what is the coolest thing you've ever got to do for your work? You can oh, have a top two work? if you need to for anything. You can have like a top three if it's like too hard to decide, but I know you've done some cool things. Oh man. Uh, Like for hair, I guess, like I've gotten to do amazing hair shows. I've got to travel a lot. Um, One year during the uh, Kevin Beach Beach Music Festival, Tracy Mel. No, not sure. I say her name wrong all the time. For me, talk was here, <laughs> and um, Savannah Belcher and I just got to spend the whole entire weekend doing our hair and makeup in Texas, nice. and that was super fun because we got to see like the background scene work of like a TV production show, like a big one, right? Mm. That was that was a really super cool experience. I loved that. I loved every minute of that. Um, Probably one of the most exciting things that I've ever done is uh, floor manage the Canadian Country Music Awards once. Mm. Uh, that was wild. And yeah. then the following year, I went back and I 
had never done anything like it before, but the following year they brought me back and I script script edited for Rick Mercer. And I had no idea what I was doing, like not a freaking clue what I was doing, <laughs> but the actual script writer was a really, really nice guy and he was super, mm. super helpful. But um, those were really, really cool times. Like, yeah. Back when there was like huge events and <laughs> back when there were huge <laughs> back when there were huge events and I just yeah. I lucked into that I, I totally lucked into those jobs because working um the East Coast Music Awards I met the production team that did mm. the Canadian Country Music Awards and they just brought me out there for two years so where were they super cool um one they were in Calgary one year and in Saskatoon the other year Cool. So yeah, you got to see different parts of the country just for that. Yeah. Um, and I would challenge you and say, you probably didn't just luck out in that. Like you like <laughs> we did such an amazing job at the East Coast Music Awards that they were like, we need her on our team. That's not luck, Sharon. That's skill. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> just accept it. <laughs> Don't maybe Thank me. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, we're ridiculous. I love it. Julianne is also teaching me in life just to say thank you. Thank you. Just say thank you. You don't have to, no argument, nothing. Just say thank you. It's challenging, isn't it? Very, yeah. very. Yeah. Um, I think as entrepreneurs, <laughs> we both hear that. Um, many of us, are, we're experts at what we do, yet we don't take the credit for being the experts, right? Like a lot of entrepreneurs are that same way too. It's like, oh, but I could have done it a little bit better or I could have done this differently or whatever. It's so so that art of learning to say thank you and accept when people give you compliments or appreciate you, like all of those who are listening right now, please, if you take anything away from these chats that you listen to, that is one of them. Like you deserve to be celebrated. Right. We're all our own worst critics. Mm. And I feel like also as entrepreneurs, we're also very good at lifting other people up being like, Oh my gosh, that was so good. You did such a good job. And then when people bring it back on you, you're like, Oh yeah, it was good, but I could have tweaked it this way or I could have made it better this Mm -hmm. way. Like we all see our own faults in what we create, but Mm -hmm. to somebody else, what we create is magic. So. Mm. Yeah. So how do we, how do you see your own magic? Right. Hmm. that's a podcast all on its own genius right okay write that down perfect always we're always adding to the episode your own magic Hmm. right (laughs) why not I like it um so while we're on the topic of like really cool things that you've done I know you've met some famous people also are you willing or able to share any like fun stories of celebrities uh yeah sure I can do two I'll do two um probably one of the coolest things or the coolest most famous person I ever met was George Wendt and I'm probably going to date myself on this one if there's any younger entrepreneurs I'm sorry but a long time ago there was this really great show called Cheers (laughs) people are like what (laughs) everybody knows your name where everybody knows your name and the guy that sat at the end of the bar, his name was Norm. <laughs> and in real life, his name is George Wentz. And uh, the summer I had my first daughter, he was on Prince Edward Island, Prince Edward Island playing um, the mother in Hairspray. And the mother was always classically like played by a man. It's a drag mm. role. Cool. And uh I actually have a picture of George Wendt holding my baby, like snuggling wow. her. And I always just think that's so cool. I'm like, oh, that's the well, most baby. famous person you're ever going to come to. Yeah. And you're not even going to remember it. <laughs> the <No>. baby. <laughs> you <Not> do. <laughs> uh, cool. And then I have one that's good. It's embarrassing. So here's a good funny one for all of y'all, especially if there's any uh, musicians that listen to this podcast. So the last time I worked the ECMAs um, was before it got taken over by Eastlink. So it was still done by a major production company. I was stage managing the show and we were like at the end of the show 
and David Miles from Classified were going to sing their songs together. Do they? Mm. See, I can't even say it. They were going to perform on their stage together. And David Miles was up there. Uh, there was an award being given out. And David Miles was like prepping the stage and getting everything ready. And Classified was out back talking to somebody. I have no idea who he was talking to. And I'm, for the record, I'm five feet tall. And he's like, not like five feet up tall. here. He's not <laughs> five feet tall. He is he's like, extremely tall. Yeah. And I would go up and I'd be like, hey, you know, I need two minutes and you have to be up on the stage. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> and he wasn't coming and he wasn't like leaving this conversation. And David Powell mm-hmm. was ready. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need you to come with me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. I'll be there in a second. And finally, I walked up to him and I'm like, listen, I need you to get on that stage and I need you to sing. And he looked at me and he went, sing. And I went, I literally, sorry, beat that out. I dropped the F on and I literally in front of him went, rap. And I ran away. <laughs> and you ran away. <laughs> I ran away. Legit. And I could hear him yes. laughing behind me, but I was like, I literally dropped the F bomb in front of him because I, he was like, sing. And I just I don't say. did that. I ran away. And then later that night at the after party, um, Stuart Cameron came up to me and he was like, so like me and the guys were talking and we all kind of decided that you're lucky you're little because it makes you cute. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd kind of be a bulldog. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Mortifying. You. Oh, also, for those of you who are listening on the podcast and not watching the video, when I told him to rap, I did full out, full out rap arms and like leg lift, yes. like <laughs> leg lift and everything. Was, oh, I love it. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> But hey, but you had a job that. to do. You had a job to do. And he, he, he was ruining there. it. Yes. He just was not interested. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yes, I'm little and I'm bubbly and I can be super fun, but I'm going to do a good job of what I'm doing. So you get up there and you rap. Put the hammer down. <laughs> <laughs> good on you. Oh, God. That's awesome. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes, right? Like you just that's like, it. you don't even know what's going to kick in and there you go. <laughs> Yeah, love it. Exactly. I love it. Well, and I, I feel like this is the perfect time to tell us about puking rainbows. <laughs> See, things like I don't understand why you asked me to do this podcast because things just come out of my nose, and I don't I know, even know where it. they come from. I love it. <laughs> so, puking rainbows. Oh, way back in the day, I was asked to be on a panel at the Peebwa Symposium. So Mm -hmm. that is a symposium where business women from all over the island get together. And that there's usually like 300 of them, right? Mm -hmm. I think the room fits like 200, maybe 250. Yeah, I've only been to one in person. And then it's been COVID since I've been around. So um, I can imagine they'd be a lot of people. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, I was on a panel with a bunch of other very professional people and I can't even remember what the question was that was asked to me but it was just like I just like to bring happiness to the world if I mm-hmm. have to I will drive through the Starbucks drive through with kitty cat ear headbands on just to make the guy at the window smile like right. essentially I just like to puke happiness into the world. Those were the words I used in front of a room of people. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, I just said that. (laughs) And then my panel section was over and I went down and, you know, you like turn on your phone to look at things and Facebook is like quote of the day Sharon Keller likes to puke happiness into the world with like rainbow puke emojis like multiple Amazing. people tweeted it I was like oh man <laughs> like and I'm never showing my face again <laughs> and this is why you don't let Sharon speak in public when she doesn't have a script <laughs> I think that's more reason to do that to be honest we need more people like you mm-hmm. um it's, it's gonna come out <laughs> exactly 
that's all right. I like it. I, I'm here for it, Sharon. Very much. Very much here for it. All right. Um, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs then who are like struggling to show up as their authentic selves because they feel like they have to be like those other women on the panel who are, you know, that professional or like expected setup? Um, and then there's you. How, how can they be more authentic and show up as their true selves? Took me a long time to do it. Mm. Took me a really long time to do it. I wanted to be cookie cutter for a really long time. And as I got older, I just naturally started started accepting the things that kind of like I was drawn to and made me quirky. And I, like, honestly, I really think it's an age thing and I hate to say that but like as you get older you just stop caring so much Mm. about what other people think and I really wish that I could reel that back and teach that to like the new generation of people that are coming out that Mm. feel like they can't present themselves in any form of social media unless they are like 100% done up or 100% mm-hmm. um, looking and acting the way they think society should. Mm. Like, it's, it's a hard thing to get used to, but you can't be authentically happy until you embrace really the things that make you truly happy, right? If you're always mm-hmm. trying to please other people's aesthetic, you're never going to be happy with your own. So yeah. I like wear sequins whenever I can now because that makes me freaking happy. Mm-hmm. I don't care how it makes other people feel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great message. And I, and I hope that seeing women like you and, and there's other women like that too, who are really just embracing who they are. Um, although it took you a little bit later in your life to figure that out, hopefully you doing it and, and being out there and showing that maybe it will start to show up earlier for those who are younger. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. all you can do is continue to lead by example and share the struggle right? Like talk about how shitty it felt whenever you were trying to be someone that you're not or trying to fit this like cookie cutter mold. Um, and then how fun it is to truly just not give a shit anymore <laughs> about what other people think of you, right? It doesn't mean exactly. that you don't care about other people. It just means that you care more about being you than making someone else happy or comfortable even really. Yeah. And then in the end of the people who don't like it, and either walk away or leave or whatever, they never really mattered in the first place. Mm. Like they're they not never, two people. They never cared that much in the first place. They, mm. Yeah. They're yeah. going to attract those that appreciate what you are. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, that would be a tough process too, I guess, like weeding out the people who you thought were your people. And then recognizing, wait a second, they like that person I was pretending to be. And maybe I don't even really like them, but they're comfortable. And, you know, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. I lived for a lot of years like that. I worked for uh, a company and I was trying to fit kind of like a cookie bot, cookie cutter shape Mm. of what they needed. And they were amazing to serve my purpose and help me grow as a stylist and as an educator mm. and all of that jazz. But I didn't fit into their box. Yeah. So, and so you know, like you have, to, oh, you have to move on and find a new. You do. Was there anything that happened to help you recognize that you needed to move on from that and that it just wasn't working? Um, just a general sense of like unease with the Mm -hmm. whole thing just over time feeling a little more unsettled and then realizing that I don't have to feel that way that there's always another option there's always another 
place you can work for, there's always another avenue to be able to go down Mm. where you can probably be a little more authentic to who you really are. Or you start working for yourself. Oh, yeah. That's even better, (laughs) in my opinion. (laughs) Right? What do we know? Um, Nothing. 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 We're just figuring it out as we go. Sometimes it feels that way. Um, Then sometimes we have to give ourselves credit where it's due as well, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship's not for everybody either. Um, No. But it can be very um, freeing and it can be very satisfying and it can be very terrifying. Yeah. (laughs) And I am not good at all aspects of it. Mm. You know, sometimes you need to also do it and seek out help. Absolutely. Yeah. And like the conversation we were having with the group yesterday too, was sometimes you're so deep in your own business that you can't see all these amazing possibilities and opportunities that are right in front of you. And then other people on the outside are like, how do they not see this? Um, So having a great network and a community that is willing to say like, Hey, Sharon, have you thought about doing this? And that you are, you know, just simply there to welcome it and listen to their ideas and implement what feels right. You don't have to do it, but to know that people care enough about you to share those things is awesome. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You need a bubble, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, one of the smartest things I ever heard was um, the lesson of the group of eight type of thing. You need six or eight people in your life who you can always turn to that are not friends mm-hmm. and are not necessarily within your business realm. Some of them can be, but like just a diverse group of people that you can talk to and trust and hash things out with. And the, the ideas and the options are endless when you have something Mm. like that, because just like we talked about yesterday, when you're so immersed in your business and you say that, then three or four other people in that circle are going to say, well, have you ever thought of this? Or have you ever thought of that? Or have you ever thought of that? And then all of a sudden sparks start flying and magic Mm -hmm. can happen. You know? Yeah. There's the magic again. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. I love that. It's, um, there's just something about that community Um, and knowing that you can reach out to different people and say, I need help, or I'm just feeling lost, or, you know, I'm not feeling that drive or that passion that I normally do, like what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Because entrepreneurship above all else can be very, very lonely too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't do it by yourself. No, no, nor do we want to, like we're social creatures. Mm hmm. We have need people that we can be silly with, uh, (laughs) that we can bounce ideas off of and yeah. And support because it feels good to support others too. Right. We don't always need to look for it for ourselves. Nope. It's good to be a cheerleader. Yeah. I like it. Um, you, uh, well, I'm going to ask you, yeah, I'm going to ask you this question next. (laughs) Tell me about what you do to manage your self-care. <laughs> she laughs. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not the best at self-care. I will say that. Uh, but the few things that I do, uh, I love to read. Mm. It can't be too deep. Like it's, it's usually like, teen like adventure type of thing uh, like the young adult uh, stuff yeah like whatever love harry potter love uh the hunger games i'm mm-hmm. reading a series right now um called the lost cities and it's about this little elf girl that has to save the realm whatever it's great because I can <laughs> yeah. lose myself in it. And I'm a mm. super visual person. Like I see pictures inside my head all the time. Very yeah. vividly. Yes, you are. 
<laughs> Julianne has heard all that a lot of my things are inside of my head. So many so visions. Really, <laughs> so many visions. Uh, so I can literally, while I'm reading these books, kind of create a movie inside my head. I love mm, that's cool. like Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. So reading a book or chilling out and watching a movie is are two of the ways I'm not like a bubble bath person. I mm-hmm. am the funniest person in the world. Like I can't go get my nails. Well, I can, but mm. when I go get my nails done or something like that, I'm like, oh, I could have done it myself. Mm. Isn't it weird? Like I could understand I could that and save that money. Right. <laughs> and you can do a good job of it. Like I cannot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but even like the girl that I've been going to, to get my nails done lately, like she's been saying she usually does her own, but she's like every now and then she has like a buddy who is also like a good friend. Who's also a, an esthetician and they'll do each other's right. But they're not paying for it. So maybe that's different, but yeah. you do an awesome job of your own nails. So I probably wouldn't pay for it either if I had that skill. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, yeah, I don't do self care yeah. in those ways. My mm. biggest, I think my biggest treat that I give myself and my husband will like take the kids or whatever is um baking I'm obsessed with baking shows like probably to uh, like intervention level obsessed (laughs) with baking shows yes I'm pretty sure I've watched all of the great Canadian baking shows twice as well as the great British bake-off twice um but my self-care is like taking mm. those hard challenges in those baking mm. shows and trying to do it myself. Mm. And the harder the challenge. Yeah. yeah. And I, I tend to do it when I'm anxious. Like if I'm having mm. a lot of anxiety and anxiousness, it's just so funny. Like the harder the recipe, the harder the task, it's like the more centered I become and the more focused I can mm. become. And I just bake it. Mm. and then I have to try to give it away (laughs) (laughs) right um that was uh, that was another reason I wanted Steph to be here tonight because she is such a baker too um and you guys would have geeked out that probably would have been the whole episode so maybe it's good she's not here no I'm just kidding (laughs) um but I have been able to um eat some of the things that both of you have made so don't stop baking um never is that, have you always been interested in baking or is that something that's more new for you? I've always liked baking. I've always liked the challenge of like cake baking and things like that. Mm. Um, but it was during COVID, it was during lockdown that I was like, I'm going to try these crazy things. Mm. Like, I'm going to try to make my own puff pastry. I'm going to try to make the crazy bedonkers things that they make on yeah. those shows and I mean it doesn't always turn out no but uh, it's okay it's always edible yeah it doesn't go in the <laughs> garbage or anything <laughs> it's quite a lot pretty but it's always <laughs> edible yeah that's cool and you make cakes for like birthdays and stuff too right like you decorate really beautiful cakes for the girls and yeah yeah, yeah. If they like and that's the thing is they know and it's my jam and Mm -hmm. They have to leave me alone and I'll make them a really cool cake. (laughs) Well, it's like, I can imagine that's nice to see you have the house to yourself, no interruption, something really great to focus on. Do you like crank up music or anything like that? Or do you like silence? Like, what is your baking like to set the mood? What does that look like for you? I usually have the great British baking show on Netflix. So you watch the show while you're baking. That's awesome. (laughs) I can't get it up. I can't get it up. Sometimes, but no, it's not that. I actually just like the silence. Mm. I just like to bake. Yeah, that's an awesome self care. Reading, baking, why not? You've been doing great with your workouts too, right? Like moving your body. Awesome. Yeah, that's a necessary. Um, mm-hmm. If I don't do it, I can literally feel my brain fogging up. Mm. So it took me a long time to realize that one too. If I, if I'm having a particularly bad day, Kieran mm-hmm. will be like, when was the last time you worked out? Mm, he knows. And if it's, if it's more than two days, it's 
like that's exactly what it is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We notice it, right. It's like, it's almost beyond being self-care and just being essential for many people. Yeah, it is for me. I don't like doing it Yeah, at all, but you got to get it done. Got to get it done. Um, and then camping is probably, is kind of like in a way that's fun for you. It's like something fun for you guys to look forward to, right? You're going to do some camping this summer. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait. Mm. Yeah. Just get out there. Just get a break. There's, it's like, yeah, it's like a totally different dynamic, right? My kids are even different when we go camping. The devices mm. go away and they just, our kids. Yeah. It's the best. That's really cool. I'm excited for you. Feels like, um, well, and like, it's getting nice out now. So it's just like tempting. It's like, shouldn't it just be like summer by now? Like we got an early spring. So it was like a bit of a weird tease and I don't know. Like, what are you waiting for summer? Come on. We're ready. I know. It's like so beautiful weird. and then it's freezing. It's yeah. so weird. So weird. Soon. Oh, well, that's okay. It'll be here before we know it. It will. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to share with our listeners? Any fun tips or tricks? Words of wisdom? I think like fun tips or tricks. Do you want to know what I've... I have lived my entrepreneurial life by one motto. And it's kind of like the one thing that I always say to myself and I say to my husband and like anybody else that is like contemplating a next step or Mm -hmm. something new. And it's like, if you can afford the failure, take the leap. Mm. Like, if it's not going to break you, if it's not going to like run you down or anything like that, but it's something that fires you up, but is scary, just take the leap. Cause if you don't, you're never going to know what could have or would have or should have happened. Mm. I've taken so many leaps. I've done ridiculous things I bought a freaking camper and I flipped it and it was the best leap and it was so much fun but it was a leap that didn't turn out because of many different circumstances but now somebody else owns it and it's another entrepreneur that owns it and they're going to do great things with it so it's no failure to me Mm -hmm. I didn't lose anything on it I gained a lot of perspective. I learned a lot of lessons. Yeah. So, you know, Mm. if there's something you want to do, if you know that you can afford the failure of it, take the leap because otherwise you're just going to come down with it. Yeah. I think that's awesome advice. And it's, you know, the, the big scary steps are usually the most rewarding. Um, but often the ones that never get taken also, um, But if it's, you know, obviously if it's, you know, paying your mortgage or your bills versus, you know, doing this, you need to take care of yourself, but figure out what is, maybe it's a smaller leap to start. And, um, there's always other ways to do it, I think too. So exactly. But yeah, take the chance, right. Trust yourself, I guess. Take the chance or like, don't keep it bottled up inside your own head. If it's a huge business idea. Mm. like I'm a firm believer in um, talking out your dreams and talking Mm. them out to as many people as you possibly can, because you're either going to manifest it yourself or if it's one of those things that seems unattainable or just out of your reach, somebody within that conversation zone is going to have an idea or a way or a partnership or something that can probably help that happen. Mm. You always have to talk. Yeah. Keeping it to yourself. Isn't going to have it just magically appear one day. (laughs) And so many people know so many of my crazy ideas, but I keep (laughs) talking about them because, you know, 
one day you're going to meet someone who says, yes, let's do that. Or I, you need to meet this right? person or, you know, like, and PEI is such an interconnected community. Um, so you just yeah. don't know what might happen if you, you just keep putting it out there. Right. Climbing the right people. It's key. Your circle. Find that six to eight people. <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Cause it's yeah. Like, Oh, it's not for the faint of heart, but we didn't get into entrepreneurship to play it safe either. No, I think that's a good we're reminder. Rebel. For people. Yeah. I rebels without a cause. Rebels. Yeah. Rebels and sparkles. I like it. Every time I talk about my sparkles, I have to dance a little right? bit. Move around a little bit. Um, so tell us, Sharon, where can people find you online if they want to see your cool reels or like the awesome wigs that you're making? Um, where should they, where should they look you up? Uh, so you can find me on Facebook at bounce hair, bounce exclamation point hair studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, not a ton of traffic happens there. It's just all push feed from my Instagram and my Instagram is bounce hair PEI. Cool. Is that right? Is it Bounce Hair Studio PA? No, it's just Bounce Hair PEI. <laughs> I'm going to get a double check. Check no, it's it. Just Bounce Hair PEI. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, there's some fun content going to come up on there soon. So I can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And very, very funny cool. reels. <laughs> They're very enjoyable. So thank you for always making me laugh. I appreciate I it. I'm very I good. At it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for being here tonight. Um, thank you for we've, been, we've, me. we've been wanting to get you on here for a long time. So worked out great. And um, if, uh, yeah, anyone who has any further questions for Sharon, reach directly out to her or let us know and we'll connect with her. Um, she's always open for a good chat and she's always, always there to make things sparkle. So with all that, I guess we will uh, say goodbye for now. And um, thanks everyone for listening and watching. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us, Thriving Tides, on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents. <laughs>